Wait a minute, I hear something. Dr. Boober! Hey everybody, welcome back again. It's another episode of Dr. Movie, your favorite podcast on wheels. Or favorite podcast behind the steering wheel, or picky wheel, I don't care. Uh, any any wheel you like. Uh, maybe it's sucking your wheel to live. I don't know. <laughs> A little uh, Wayne's World humor for you there this morning. Uh... Still looking at the body swapping genre here. Now this one doesn't really qualify as a body swapping. Um, maybe the size of body swapping, which ironically uh, is this movie is kind of the same story as Shazam, even though Shazam's a lot later. But I think they kind of use this as a template of how to approach the new Shazam movies, which, you know, maybe I'll talk about eventually. Just saw the, the, the newest one, and uh, eh, it's okay. But uh, we are obviously talking about 1988's Big. You know, I would think in most people's minds when you think of a body-swapping movie of some sort, how can you not love this movie, right? And, you know, you, you in your mind... It's one of those I saw quite a bit growing up. You kind of forget how good it is. Um, This is a well-made movie. So uh, that that really adds something special to it. This this is a special movie, y'all. And it's early Tom Hanks, which I love early Tom Hanks. Uh, Not so much on the later. Um, It's almost that you get too big for your britches kind of thing, but something about this time period, I mean, (laughs) I love Bachelor Party, I love all the early stuff, Uh, because he really knows how to capture the kid, right? Uh, In the words of of Step Brothers, not giving up your dinosaur, right? Be a dinosaur. Uh, Never lose being young. And, uh, I think for most of his early career, that's really what he played off of. But yeah, we're talking about Big from 1988. It says comedy fantasy. Uh, Synopsis, again, everybody is straightforward. After a wish turns 12-year-old Josh Baskin uh, into a 30-year-old man, he heads to New York City and gets a low-level job at McMillan Toy Company. And it just keeps going and going. So, uh, yeah. He uh, he makes a wish, y'all. He wants to be big. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much it, right? Uh, you have to talk about this being directed by Penny Marshall. Love me some Penny Marshall. Uh, actually miss her quite a bit. Um, and I think that really plays into another another factor that makes this movie so special. You think about the movies that she did, and they're all... They've all got a special touch to them. And that's weird coming from Laverne, right? From Laverne and Shirley. You wouldn't think it, but she really had... She really had something. And, um... So, yeah, let's uh, let's get into this one. Uh, let's talk about our cast for a little bit. Uh, Tom Hanks, obviously. We've got uh, Elizabeth Perkins in this. Uh, y'all all know her from like Weeds, uh, the Flintstones movie, Miracle on 34th Street, when they did the, the remake of that. Uh, he said, she said, I mean, she, she's she's been in it, folks. She's in some stuff. Um, Jared Rushton, who plays uh, the best friend, he's just a kid in this one, right? Pet Cemetery 2, uh, cry, a cry of the wild, right? He's in Overboard. I mean, you've seen this kid in a lot of stuff. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Uh, Lady in White. He's in it too. He's not the main character, but he's in there. And uh, the the one you have to talk about, obviously, is Robert Loggia, right? Or Loggia. Robert Loggia. Uh, come on, man. I mean, 
I mean, Scarface, uh, you know, he's legendary, right? Owner of the toy store here that we're, or toy company that we're going to be talking about. Uh, we got John Hurd in this. Uh, John Hurd's been around in a lot of stuff. The Home Alone movies as the dad. Um, that's really the big thing I think of more than anything else. <clears throat> so, and again, the the list goes on and on and on. There's quite a few people. Uh, De- Deborah Jo Rupp is in this from that 70s show. Um, you know, quite a few. But uh, that's not what we're here. We're here to talk about the movie. I'm probably not going to tell you anything you don't already know, right? It's it's pretty much a standard, a classic. Um, I don't know that we've made one any better, even even Shazam included. As much as I loved the first Shazam movie, it, it's still this the same factor of, you know, the whole reason they do all these swapping movies is for the exact reason of this. And it's... What if you're put in a situation and you have to fake it, right? There's a there's a TV series called Resident Alien. I think I've brought it up before. Uh, that it's kind of the same premise where an alien lands on Earth. It's on Sci-Fi Channel. It's a TV series, and uh, he lands on Earth and transforms into uh, the shape of a person that he first encounters, who accidentally dies. And he just stays in that form, and everything he learns about humans is from the TV, and it stays on, and it's pretty much showing, like, L.A. Law all the time. That's all it shows. Is it L.A. Law? What show is it? There's a show that's on nonstop that he learns everything about people from, and lo and behold, when he dies, he ends up being, he, he, the, the body that he's kind of taking over is the, the doctor for the community, right, for this town. So he has to fake being a doctor and fake being a person, all that kind of stuff. Same idea here, right? Um, Tom Hanks, his character, goes to a fair. And you get your typical things, right? I mean, him and his buddy are sitting outside. There's a girl that walks by. He likes. She's a little older. But she actually says hi to him one morning, and it just, you know, gives him the, the thrill, right? And, uh... You get a lot of development between him and his buddy being best friends, you know, their relationship. And they go to uh, a fair. And uh, they're standing there, and, and Tom Hanks' character, which is not Tom Hanks at this point, he's the little boy, he sees the girl standing in line to go get on a ride. And he's like, hey, I, I want to go do this ride by myself. And the parents are like, sure, yeah. Here, here's some money. Go do your thing, right? So he goes over and ends up sneaking up right beside her. She recognizes him. They get to talking a little bit. And then all of a sudden, this girl's boyfriend shows up, who's twice his size. And so he just acts like, well, I'm just here to get on the ride. Well, he gets up to the thing where he's supposed to get on. And they have one of them things there that says, you know, you must be this this tall to ride. And, of course, he's not tall enough, so he gets kicked out. This upsets him even more. So he finds this machine... Everybody knows about the Zoltar machine. And, uh, you know, he puts his coin in it. And he starts slapping it because it's not working. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, uh, the eyes light up. And this thing's creepy. It really is. And uh, it's got this mouth. It's, it's you know, it's kind of got a swami guy in there like we talked about before. And uh, grant your wishes. A genie, I guess you'd say. Zoltar. And, uh... He uh, puts a coin in, and a little piece of paper comes out, and on the back of it it says, Your wish is granted. And he doesn't really think about it, but you look down and you notice that the machine's not even plugged in. Right? So it worked just for him. But he goes home, goes to bed, wakes up the next morning, and he's a full-grown adult. Right? Tries to put on his pants. You get the Tom Hanks humor in this. Um, He sneaks out of the house because he's so scared he don't know what to do and doesn't know how to go tell his folks that now he's this 30 year old man he decides to build up the courage and later on and go back and try to tell his mom but his mom thinks it's some kind of guy that's broken in the house it's probably going to try to rape her and he's trying to explain that it's him and it doesn't go well 
<clears throat> so now he feels like he can't be at home. He goes to school and sneaks into school, finds his best friend. And again, it's a situation where it's, you know, it's after gym class and uh, the kid's putting up all the balls and he's in the room by himself and there's Tom Hanks. And again, the little boy starts getting nervous because there's this grown man that he don't know in there with him that's calling out his name. You know, creepy stuff. <clears throat> and then uh, then he has to prove to him that, they're, that, that he is who he says he is, right? His best friend. And uh, he comes up. They get this, this uh, song that they kind of sing together, and that's how he knows. So what they do is they say, okay, we got to figure out, you know, what you can do now. So they take him to New York City. They find him a job for this company, and uh, which is... You know, it's straight up business, right? They're making toys, and you got to remember, he's a kid, right? So it's the the perfect situation. We've kind of seen this before too, right? And uh, but he ends up becoming uh, a favorite of Robert Lagia, who's you know running this thing, and he kind of moves him up into like a vice president <laughs> situation over time. Well, actually, it happens pretty quick, like a week or something. And, uh, again, it's, it's all about child mentality in a human body. And they put him on this board where they're looking at all the new toys coming out, and he's pointing out all the problems with it and why a kid wouldn't want to play with it because he's a kid. So you've got a bunch of people that work there that are totally out of touch. They're only looking at the, the raw data, which, I mean, data is important, right? I get it. But you got to understand what that tells you because they build they build like this transformer, you know, which was the big toy of the time. But it's a building, and he's like, "Who wants to play with a building? I mean, so what? You made a transformer, but you made it out of something that's not cool. I mean, what if you made a transformer that turned into a bug or something like that? And kids would be, and they're like, "Oh yeah, that's such a better idea." So, but the thing is, is this is brought up by. Uh, I can't think of his name at the moment. Let me see here. Um, John Hurd's character, Paul. I'm trying to think of the character name. So Paul is the one that's bringing up this idea. And, and of course, again, uh, Josh, which is Tom Hanks, is pointing out all the problems. Um, there's also the love interest of Susan, which doesn't start off as a love interest. Um, it's very, very innocent. But she's made her rounds in the company, right? She's dated all the people that kind of get moved up quick. She's trying to find her place in life. Obviously, she's not happy or she wouldn't bounce around like she does. But currently, she's with Paul. But as time goes on, she gets interested in Josh, who really has no interest in any kind of sexual relationship, right? Because he's he's an 11-year-old kid, right? I mean, he's interested, but he don't know the first thing about what this kind of relationship is. So you get all that in this too, right? And you get her realizing how simplistic life can be. It doesn't have to be this humdrum, boring, drawn-out thing, right? You forget how to live. I think that's really what this is pointing out is. And that's the beautiful thing about Robert Lagia is, you know, He's let the business overwhelm him, and he's forgotten how to live as well. And Tom Hanks's character kind of reestablishes that for everybody. And uh, that's kind of the beautiful thing about this movie. And obviously, it gets to a point to where he wants to go back home. I mean, he, he's actually going out into the world, become successful. And again, like in all these movies. You, you know, you get isolated and you forget your best friend and you kind of damage that friendship and you're throwing away a lot of things that you hold so important in your life due to a career, right? And uh, so it makes some very strong start points about all that. It gets to the point where Josh, which is Tom Hanks, just wants to go back home. He wants to go back home and be a kid, right? And, uh, his, his buddy, Billy, has been reaching out and trying to contact and find out where there's another Zoltar machine because that's the, it's the only way to get this to change again is to go and, you know, make the, make the wish to be reversed. <sighs> and, uh, sorry about that. That's, uh, 
that's the game plan, right? But again, Josh loses focus because he gets so wrapped up in this new life, the new job, the money. He's got his own place. His house is full of toys. Uh, you know, so you kind of get that left behind kind of thing with his buddy. Uh, lo and behold, he finds out where the machine is. And again, the, the castle starts come crumbling down and Josh just wants to go home. And uh, he finally gets to the urge to, to go and change all this. But the only thing he's going to leave behind is this relationship with Susan, which uh, he ends up caring a lot for, right? And we do get the scene at the end where after he makes the wish, she drives into his house. He gets out and he starts walking. And at one point, she looks and he turns to, turns back around. He's in his suit as as an adult. Then all of a sudden, he's a kid in an adult suit, right? And he's running to his house. His parents have been missing him this whole time. And, uh, you know, it kind of gives you that ending, right? And, uh, it, again... I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I mean, if anything, I hope it re-encourages you to, to go check it out again and really pay attention to how well this movie is put together. I mean, we all know the things that stand out, the piano, you know, the dancing piano scene, the, you know, all the crazy stuff that's in it, right? All the great Tom Hanks stuff, the the caviar, you know, <laughs> he's a little kid trying caviar and he just spits it out right there in front of everybody. Eating the little corn, right? The little little miniature miniature corn, um, you know. But overall, this is such a well put together movie that I think gets overlooked, and uh, it's a shame because I, I, I'm, you know, I was sitting there watching it with with my wife, and I was like, "This is a really good movie, not just story wise. I mean, the story is fantastic, you know, the whole Tom Hanks thing." But this is a well put together movie, so um, it, it still holds up, y'all. I mean, and you gotta you gotta appreciate the 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 '80s technology being a forefront in this movie too, as far as you know his work, his computer, uh, his his you know John Lovitz working right beside him in the office. I mean, all that's just great. So highly recommend it. It's, this is a five out of five. I mean. Uh, I thought maybe it would pull it back, and I like these other movies just as well. This one is just a, a little bit above normal with these flicks. So, uh, can't recommend it enough. If you've never seen this movie, you got to check it out. If you have seen this movie, you need to watch it again. Um, it, it is a special movie, y'all, I'm telling you. And uh, in my mind, it's that thing again of, I'm surprised we haven't remade it. Well, we have. It's just Shazam. And uh, if you haven't seen Shazam, I, I recommend the first one for sure. Second one, I'm still trying to figure out my feelings on that one. But the first one for sure feels just like Big. Uh, even has the best friend kind of setup scenario just like this one. And uh, so there you go, folks. That's my take on Big. And hope you enjoyed it because I did. And until next time, folks, we will check you later. Dr. Cooper!